Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. The famous blue marble, the picture of Earth that was taken from Apollo 17. They took multiple, but for some reason, this is the only one they show the public. And I think I know why. Because here's another one from Apollo 17. And a lot of them had a big old fat Terminator line. So if they did the mission the way they said they did the mission, well, you would never see a Terminator line on Earth. If you were heading toward the sun at the beginning of your mission, you're going to be toward the sun, on the way to the mission, and during the mission. It's impossible to catch this photo and this photo on the way to the moon. Okay, this is Earth, this is the spaceship, and this is the moon. So what they say is, they got to set out toward where the moon will be by the time they get there. So, the moon will be aligned with the sun. You're the sun, okay? Now, that's the Earth. So here's what they would have had to do. They would have had to leave Earth with the tra trajectory toward the sun because the sun and moon would be about lined up by the time they land there. So they'd have to take off and meet. Boom, right? Start orbit and then land, whatever. But look, any picture you take of the Earth leaving the Earth to the moon, any picture you take in that entire trip, you're going to have a fully lit Earth because you're heading toward the sun the entire time. You're not gonna have a Terminator line, ever. I think this guy's missing something here. When he is showing his model of the moon going between the sun and the earth, it's casting a shadow that looks identical to the photo onto his model. I feel like he just proved that the footage was more likely to be real, which I don't buy. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't believe NASA is telling us the truth about anything. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that he showed what he was trying to show. The car that should have made Henry Ford more famous than the Model T. The car that didn't just run off of him, but was also made out of him. And the super lightweight plastic material was 10 times harder than steel. You can see Ford demonstrating it with a crowbar there. Of course, the parasites decided that such a economical friendly car that would literally come from the ground wasn't near as much of a profitable leech off of us as the petroleum based products and fuel. Amongst the thousands of products made from him, one of the most extraordinary is Henry Ford's plastic car. Built in 1941, it contained cellulose fibers derived from hemp, sisal, and wheat straw. The plastic was lighter than steel, yet could withstand 10 times the impact without denting. You know, it's fascinating to see that as far back as Henry Ford's day, they were innovating, trying to figure out better ways to make an or a more economically built car that was better for the environment and better for your pocketbook. Even as far back as Henry Ford's time, they've been sweeping this stuff under the rug and taking inventions off the shelf that could revolutionize things because it's taken money out of the pockets of those who are in control of Congress. Unfortunate, but we see it over and over again. You ain't gonna believe this. I found a parachute. Great big old white thing down there. That great big old white thing is a collapsed balloon attached to a satellite. It's 2024 and saloons are still crashing on farmland randomly. So Iowa Hay Trailers, the uh, channel that I found this on, has found a satellite by Aerostar landing on his property and a whole collapsed balloon with it. Here they are lifting the satellite up. Yeah. Satellites are still being launched by balloon in 2024. And that's no mystery. Here's a photo from Aerostar's website. They pride themselves on launching satellites. Aerostar, we've been challenging the limits of technology since 1956. Working at the forefront of high altitude research with the universities, the military, Google, and NASA. And we're not stopping there. Not even the sky is the limit. And it's funny because Google says that you can see satellites passing, looking like a star moving around in the sky. This big old light, right? Then you find out that NASA has other balloons they launch satellites with. These big chrome spheres. That looks like it would reflect quite a bit of light, don't it? Thank you, Iowa Hay Trailers, for your great work in exposing these satellite balloons. 
This makes me think of uh, what they say that every satellite that we see an image of is a 3D render. We've seen now multiples of these videos of these balloon satellites falling out of orbit and crashing into farmland and whatnot. Has anyone else noticed they look wildly different? than what we've been shown satellites are supposed to look like. Now, I know there's different types of satellites and stuff, but I haven't seen any that look like what NASA shows us is flying around in low Earth orbit. You were born last Thursday. All right, this is just a theory, and this is one of the craziest theories I've heard, so stick with me, but parts of it do make sense, so don't judge yet. This is a theory called last Thursdayism, and it's essentially the theory that the universe could have been created pretty recently, like last Thursday, but created with the physical appearance of it being billions and billions of years old, as we think it is today. Meaning, anything that can counter this theory, your memories, recordings, photos on your phones, are all installed into this, so it's like it's happened, but it hasn't. But we literally just popped into existence, and the universe seems older than it actually is. Everything was just put in almost like, you know, a video game. Now the scary bit is there is no way to prove or disprove this at all, meaning you can only be sure of what is right here, right in front of you, right now. And it also links in with the theory of solipsism, which is the theory that you are the only person alive. And again, there is physically no way to prove or disprove this because if it all exists in your mind, you can't disprove it or prove it. Even scientists have said there's no way they'll ever be able to tell. So if you're the only person alive, everybody around you is just a figment of your imagination which your mind has created so you don't feel so alone in this life. And maybe the universe was only created about a week ago but it feels like we've been here about, you know, however old you are, but you haven't. I don't know what to think of this. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That last disorder is called narcissism, right? <laughs> I like the Thursday theory, or last, or what is it called, last Thursday theory or something? Oh, yeah, last Thursdayism. I think that's a fun idea. Like he said, there'd be no way for us to tell if that if that was what reality is. If we were just all loaded into the matrix last Thursday with a bunch of ingrained memories and ideas, how would you know? Pretty wild to think. You know, maybe I took the easy way out instead of uh, uploading 105 videos. Today's the 105th. Maybe I only uploaded like three or four videos and the, the rest were just in my memory. <laughs> it's fascinating to think about, but uh, yeah, I'm not even going to pose an opinion on it because there's no way to tell if that's true or not. <laughs> it's just a crazy idea that throws you for a loop. Hey. If you're enjoying this video, I make a new one just like it every single day. It'd be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back tomorrow to join me. This is what they worship, these Satanists, Baphomet. If you notice he's androgynous, it's a male-female mixture. Also making these signs. You see the signs he's making using this sign because 11 is the devil's number. Because 11 is one beside one. In their numerology, they use 11 a lot and they like multiples of 11. 11, 22, 33, 66. They like these multiples. In their magic, they, they know the... the the secrets of numbers and so they use numbers the prophet sallallahu when they used magic on him they blew on 11 knots and this is why the mu'awi the tain has 11 ayahs because it protects against their magic this is real stuff people i'm not making this up this is real stuff you can see madonna imitating here bofamed because she's one of them and she's a numerologist she is a numerologist she practices numerology lady gaga's got tens of millions of followers. So the devil has plenty of followers on Twitter. Now this man over here, LeVay, started the Church of Satan. He wrote a satanic Bible, and he explained that that symbol that they're all doing, that symbol, he said, was a curse symbol of devils. That's the way they put curses on people. And you've got people at rock concerts, they're all doing it, thinking it's cool. Marilyn Manson was a follower of Anton LeVay. He has tens of thousands of people go to his rock concerts, he has them openly denounce God, openly. He says, I want you all to reject God tonight, and they all do it. This is real stuff, people. He's very committed to this. He's a minister in the Church of Satan, and they use music, because music is fitna, it's enticing, it sucks you in, you like it, it's enjoyable. You know, I said like a couple months back in another video that I thought that the rock and roll hand symbol was just a symbol and that your intent mattered. And I still believe that way to a degree, but I'm starting to believe more and more that even if your intent is good, if you're throwing up some of these symbols and stuff and you do know what they mean, then your intent can't overshadow the fact that you know you're you're using a symbol that has evil intent behind it so your intent can't over overshadow the intent of the symbol i'm starting to develop more of a mindset in that way um, it's actually making me start to reconsider some of the music that i listen to the more i see how evil this music industry is and how they're pushing out this satanic messaging you know a lot of songs that a lot of 
I wouldn't even say songs, but full on bands that I've that I've listened to for decades and and been obsessive over in the past. You know, uh, really, really, really big fans of. Here lately, I've found myself listening more to lyrics and songs that I didn't really pay attention to before. Some of the stuff's making me a little uncomfortable to listen to. I've had to walk away from some stuff. Demonic music. Listen to the rapper Smart expose what's really going on in the music industry. The music business is ran by the devil. So the music business is only designed to get as many people to go away from God as possible. So what happens is the devil needs workers and by workers, he needs people who have influence, who can mislead or misguide people away from the light into the darkness. So this is why the artist is powerful. So the artist is the mouthpiece. Okay, that artist is the mouthpiece between the devil and the fan. And the artist's job is to get you to throw up these weird signs. What are you doing this for? This is the bot for me. I don't fuck with this. So don't think I'm throwing this up because I, I don't fuck with this. When you see the checkerboards, when you hear them talking about demon time and drill and kill and all this, even the actual beat and the BPM, it's all 808 drums. This is all low vibration. The artist. It's only the tool used to push the message of the devil. We really need to wake up to what we are being exposed to in today's music. Please guard yourselves and stop listening to this stuff. Remember that Jesus is a healer and a deliverer, and he loves you unconditionally. Be blessed, family. <laughs> You know, this is going right back to what I was just talking about here. But to take it a step further, what he's saying about be more guarded and listen to what you're or pay more attention to what you're listening to. Don't just listen to anything. You know, there's a lot of songs that, well, we'll use Billie Eilish as an example. Some of her music is absolutely beautiful. But then you go watch the music video that accompanies the song, and it looks like something out of a satanic handbook. I mean, it it, it just straight up evil, wicked looking, like angel of death looking stuff. It, it just, all of her videos are just like she's openly promoting Satanism. This has got to be one of my favorite pictures I've found so far. I was uh, reading a while ago and I came across this section that talked about the new settlers. And they'd come into a territory, they were known as terrorists. They would come in, they would loot, they would pillage, they would steal, they would take anything that wasn't basically bolted down. And it never really occurred to me because I would figure everyone's new settlers, what are they stealing? They're stealing laundry, they're stealing bread. Anyway, you see this, this is a perfect example of heading out west and finding gold. They weren't panning for gold, they were searching for gold. These guys, this caption on this picture is a new bank vault being put into the People's uh, Savings Bank here in Cedar Rapids for early 1900s. That doesn't look new to me at all. It looks like uh, it's had a rough day. Those boys have been working all day to get that thing out. See all that covered with soot from probably running a torch, how flattened the rivets are from beating on it. Like they, that's a hard day's work right there. I don't know what was in there, but you can tell that it, that safe has seen better days. Just like the background of this picture where you can see the contractor's office, you know, that looks ransacked. The barber shop, that looks, that looked terrible. But nothing about this looks new, looks like new settlers, anyone settling in and taking care of their new community. This looks like pirates coming in to, to loot the village been hearing more and more about this theory of gold mining in the old days where they're actually stripping gold off of buildings and stuff that were left from previous advanced civilizations. That's the theory that he's pointing to right there. I haven't seen enough evidence yet to make me think that that's even plausible. We'll keep looking into it in the off chance that I do find something. I think you'll find this super interesting. Let's take a good look at this, which is the Islamic symbol. It is the star inside of a moon. So not only is the moon translucent, just like the sky behind it, that a rock would not be, this is a photographed star that is shown through the moon. Here is another picture taken. When the moon occults, remember that word, or passes in front of a bright star or planet, it is known as the Coolidge effect. This is such a mysterious phenomenon, and like all good mysteries, a solution remains unknown. 
With so many different types of telescopes out there, it would be hard to single out as the main cause of this illusion. So I also thought it was super interesting that when this happens, it's called an occultation or an occultation is an event that occurs when one object is hidden from the observer by another object that passes between them. Hmm, kind of like maybe some other types of occults that we know of, and I can't necessarily name them right now, but just because of the type of video this is gonna be. Um, but all I have to say is maybe look at certain things with different eyes. Who wears this hat? Everything I've said in this video is pure speculation and should not be taken as truth, only for entertainment purposes only. That's pretty interesting. Uh, and the fact that no one can offer an explanation, the simplest explanation is usually the correct explanation. It's either not solid or that star is closer to us than the moon is. That's the only way I can wrap my head around that, that star being where it is. It makes you wonder, is the, is the moon some sort of a projection? I don't know. That one's got me a little tripped up. <laughs> NASA has done it again. Are you ready for this? That's right. NASA has claimed that the James Webb Telescope has discovered a planet seven trillion miles away that has city lights on it like you would see on earth supposedly all of these great achievements of james webb telescope and now they found life on another planet seven trillion miles away you'll think i'm joking here's the article are you ready to see the city lights here it is seven trillion miles away on some planet that's what they see i cannot wait to hear all the globers defend this and actually believe it's real. Well, I'm currently still a Glober. I haven't switched over to the flat earth side yet. I don't believe that they actually got photos of some city on another planet. I think if that if they knew that to be fact, that's all anyone would be talking about right now. And this is a not new discovery. This was like a, a few weeks or a month or so back. I remember seeing this reported on. And uh, it was one of those, you heard about it for a day and then it disappeared situations. If this were legit, I think we'd be actively trying to get better images and trying to get something sent out there to just to investigate a little further. And it would be all that they were talking about on the news. And another part of me really feels like if they really truly discovered City lights on another planet they wouldn't even tell us about it because we're just the lowly people that don't need to know anything so for those reasons i'm gonna say that's probably bullcrap plus i just don't believe anything nasa says we're screwed yesterday i put out a video about OpenAI's new video ai called sora and since that video came out there's been hundreds of new video generations which has me a thousand times more scared so let's just go through a couple here and shout out to eduardo borges on twitter slash x he was the one who curated all these we'll start a little light and then get even crazier this first one is two golden retrievers podcasting at the top of them out. I mean, this is just absolutely insane. You can see the hair on the left one moving in the wind. Or how about these archaeologists discovering a generic plastic chair in the desert? Then there's this one of an otter surfing in a life jacket, which tells me that the animation studios are on high alert right now because this is insane. And here are the crazy ones. This one is a woman recording out of a train window in the suburbs of Tokyo. You literally cannot tell if this is real or fake. And when they pass the building, you can see her reflection in the window. It's this is absurd. And then there's this one of a chameleon, which you really cannot tell if it's real or fake. It looks like it's from a Nat Geo documentary. And the craziest one, in my opinion, is this Dalmatian looking out a window and it like steps on the windowsills. You can even see it being like timid to go on the ledge. I cannot believe this. Let me know if you think this is cool or if we are just absolutely cooked. I think this is absolutely terrifying. Of course, there's a lot of cool things it can be used for. But we're in the middle of an election year right now, and we know what that's going to be used for. We're fixing to get bombarded with fake news clips and, and videos of politicians doing things they're not really doing. And we're not going to be able to tell what's real and what's not anymore. It sucks because I thought we had at least a few more years before we reached that point. But man, those look hyper realistic. You're not going to be able to tell. Nobody is ready for this one. This probably looks familiar. It probably looks like these somatic patterns that I talk about all the fucking time. And all these things are is a petri dish on top of a speaker and a light on top of it making these cool mandala-like patterns. Now this man made one of them in a 3D design software and took cross sections of it and put different colors to those cross sections. So using a 3D cymatic pattern, this man was able to create a 
perfect image using sound and light. I want you to sit and really think about this because this is the code to reality. This is the, this is the code to the matrix or whatever you want to call it. This is how energy interacts with itself to create everything that you see. This is why cymatics and sound is so important. Vibration in general, it's all waves. And that's how we make sense of it. I'm curious, did he start with a photo in mind or did he find this cymatic wave pattern and overlay them and discover the photo? Because this looks like it's just some sort of a Photoshop manipulation where you take a photo and then subtract different subtract different things from it in layers so that you could then reverse that process to get the photo back. That's what it looks like he probably did here. It's still interesting. I don't know that this is really proving anything or showing an example of anything important. I think it's just a photo manipulation technique, but it is cool looking. President Kennedy was because he was going to release information on this. It's a burn document that was found, I want to say, like six or seven years ago. And it talked about buildings being on the dark side of the moon. He was in the Navy. He had a top security clearance. He was going to be handling video and film that came back from combat missions. And he goes, he got brought into a room one day. He said, the guy said, stay here, wait right here, I'll be right back. And he goes, so I'm standing in this dark room where they're developing a film. And the guy says, hey, man, you want to see something really cool? Come over here. So he's like, oh, okay. So he goes, I go over there and check it out. And he starts showing me buildings on the dark side of the moon. And he said to me, these aren't ours. 40 different creatures that were coming here, 40 different aliens or 40 different terrestrials, ETs that were coming here. One of the former prime ministers of England said the U.S. has been dealing with a group called the Tall Whites for like the last 15 or 20 years. The Tall Whites were a group of very Nordic looking extraterrestrials, very tall, light hair, uh, just very, very big. There was some talk that in the early 30s that there was a guy, his name was Thor, and he was a tall white, and he was working within the Senate and Congress. You know, UFOs were as real as planes that fly over your house. I mean, there he was just, he said, there's no denying it, they're there. We know they're there. I'm not convinced that we have any structures or anything on the other side of the moon. I would say that the moon is absolutely some big mystery, and there's no way of knowing what's on the other side of it until we get some actual video footage or, or photos of the other side of it. It's so hard for me to trust anything coming out of NASA. I don't even believe that the photos that we have of the Earth are real. I think it's all computer generated gem computer generated imagery. They hire more Photoshop employees there than Adobe. Anytime I hear a claim like that about buildings being on the other side of the moon or, or different races being up there or some sort of civilization or something outside of astral projection and someone finding out that way, how'd anyone know? Because we, we're not going up there. We're, we're not finding out this stuff. If the moon is supposedly hollow and you can see stars through it whenever it's disappearing throughout its phases and stuff, how are the buildings up there on top of it at all? <laughs> if it's some sort of a uh, projection or something. I think dude was right when he said yesterday that the moon is the absolute epitome of a rabbit hole. The history of Jekyll Island is a little scary. So there's a tribe of Native Americans that used to live there. The Timokua tribe and the first settlers that came to Georgia were French and they witnessed them doing blood sacrifices by killing small people. Oh goodness. People small in stature or small in age? Age. Oh. Yes. Very creepy stuff. Both are sad. Anyways, fast forward, the Timakua end up getting disease and stuff because of the colonizers the and whatnot. White man. The white man. So a lot of the elites, including the Rockefellers, Vanderbilts, the Morgans came down and they said, we want to build our summer homes here. But the Rockefellers built their house directly over the altar. The um, human sacrifice the one altar? That, yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Directly over it. And that's where they decided to create the Federal Reserve in that house. Does it not just seem like anything that the Rockefellers are involved in, like they go out of their way to do the most heinous, insane, evil thing, <laughs> right where they were doing human sacrifices of children? That's where they're they're going to build the Federal Reserve building. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. I definitely wouldn't want to be building anything right there, especially a home to live in. They've got holograms on that can actually pick things up in laboratories today, today, <sighs> that can pick things up, holograms. Physical things that we consider to be physical objects, right? By 2045, what they're saying is they'll create a hologram, which is a lot easier than cloning your body. And then they'll just transfer your consciousness into a holographic body that you can walk around in and live for forever. Now, 
Interesting stuff. This is all coming out of ancient text, guys. Think about that for a second. Ancient text. As evidenced by the information provided at 2045.com, it appears that we are following in the footsteps of the Atlanteans who are seeking eternal life in the physical form. According to the 2045 initiative mission statement, the challenge for the immediate future is to prepare humanity for its greatest intellectual transition in history. Today, it is hard to imagine a future when bodies consisting of nanobots will become affordable and capable of taking any form. It is also hard to imagine full body holograms featured, featuring controlling controlled matter. One thing is clear, however, humanity, for the first time in its history, will make a fully managed evolutionary transition and eventually become a new species. This is what they're working on, guys, in these laboratories. While we're out here trying to figure out how we're going to pay our bills and, and what, what uh, you know what we're going to eat for dinner, these people are working on this kind of stuff. This is what they're working on. You know why? Because they read these tablets. That's why. I just don't believe in this transferring consciousness concept. I don't think that that's the way it works. I think that when you transfer your consciousness from your body into an, you're just making a duplication, you're just making a copy. And that copy is going to have its own experiences and you're not going to be connected to that. So you're going to make a different version of yourself to go into this alternate body. But when your original body dies, you still die. There's just someone like you left here who's in this holographic projection of a body. At least that's the way that I see it. I don't I don't see how you can transfer your consciousness from one body into another. I just don't see it as a possibility. We don't even know what the human consciousness is. We don't know where it's stored. Now you can duplicate all the processes or, or synapses of your brain and store it in a different compartment move it onto a computer hard drive that makes sense but your consciousness is not going with it you're just making a duplicate but guys that's the end of this video i apologize if i didn't have a lot to say on some of these today yesterday was my birthday and uh stayed out too late and and got a little too turned up <laughs> <laughs> and paying the price for it today i'm exhausted and my brain's just not running on 100 percent um but i will be back tomorrow and we'll have things back up and, and running like they normally are i hope you guys enjoyed the clips i'll be back tomorrow with another video i hope you come back to join me have a great safe fantastic day and i will see you tomorrow